Alright, for a lot of people, this is definitely the bad guy deck chat. We've got a bunch of cheap blue Dorcos, curious obsessions to draw cards. We've got some counter spells. We've got some other flashy dorks. We've got things to diddle and Supreme Phantom to power stuff up. We've got a bunch of snow mana to enable Ascendant Spirit and Faceless Haven. So let's go ahead and pop on into some games with this and see how it goes. One thing that's especially sweet about this particular build of the deck is that Shifting Ceratops is a card that used to give this archetype problems back in standard. And thanks to our mana base, we actually have two different ways to interface with Shifting Ceratops now in, uh, in this archetype, which is kind of sweet. Our curve is very tightly packed, which is nice. Hopefully, Mausoleum Wanderer is in the summer release. Mausoleum Maza Wanderer and Spell Queller would both be excellent cards for the HA6. They could be angels. I'm gonna Supreme Phantom attack for two here. And then next turn, if they deploy a, a flying blocker. Or just aspirant. Okay. Holding back on this one because they're almost assuredly a Skyclave Apparition deck. dealer I enjoy getting to do the thing game one chip it's my it's my favorite this is certainly the thing our deck wants to be doing I remember faceless haven this is a paper boomer format this is a four power faceless haven Is a pretty good start. Definitely boarding out Spell Pierce. Um, probably just for dive down, huh? Keep our things alive. This is also also gets utilized as a combat trick to make our things big enough to block. Yeah, I think Melody's too slow here. I'm gonna go three three two on the disruption.
Alright, I think we just attack and hold up Mana Lake, right? Are you kidding me? Are you are you kidding me? I didn't I, I <laughs> Priority passes in this client are an actual fucking crime. Like it's it's actually just completely unreasonable that it didn't automatically give me a stop. And that I was slightly too slow. Actual trash. Take three a bunch because the client is garbage. That's fine. That's fine. Our hand is busted and they're stuck on land, so probably doesn't matter. But still, still annoying that they have a 3 2 instead of a 2 1. I don't understand why all beginning of combat cards don't just automatically give you priority during their main phase before moving to beginning of combat. It should just be a checkbox on every single card in the game that triggers at the start of combat. Just like, just like everything that happens at their end of turn should auto give you priority second main phase to get a chance to respond to it. Hey, thank you for the 70 months, Squishy. You've seen a lot here from Hex to Paper Magic to Moto to Arena to Snap and Back. There's some Rune Terror and other games in there I'm sure I'm forgetting as well. Yeah, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to the full Snap release too. We're going to be doing more Snap this week because I've been... I've been, I've been pretty addicted to, to snap in my off stream time and I'm looking to play more of it. We did play Hearthstone for two weeks. We did. Hearthstone, Hearthstone lost my interest very, very quickly. Paper magic in the basement. Those were the days. Cutting out proxies with Matthew. Why didn't Hearthstone stick? The... Deck building wasn't deep enough and the actual gameplay wasn't great. Uh, they have not given us any timelines on anything related to Snap. Which is pretty typical in the industry. They'd much rather uh, make no promises rather than make a promise and miss. I know it's annoying for people that really want to... Oh, I played... So chat, I did the wrong thing. I should have waited until I hit them with this because if we draw an island, I could have played this and still held this. I forgot this is going to be a one mana card. That's fine. No harm, no foam. Lands are gorgeous. Can we confidently raise Bone Crusher Giant? I do everything confidently, Jet. I 
guess if I draw a lofty denial, I would have preferred not to have played this. There's lots of basic signal something. Uh, probably Beanstalk Giant. Bad adventure, I guess. I mean, Omnath's a pretty scary card, Jet. Yeah, like this card, this card just gained them eight, right? They're just like, Kruga. Kruga, Omnath. How dead is my board opponent? Whoa, they didn't get rid of Rattle Chains. Do they also have removal for Rattle Chains? All right, that makes sense. We're probably dead now. Oh, hey, we've got spirits. Yes, we do. We've got spirits. How about you? Uh, Jund Fight Rigging is definitely my favorite currently. Chad, I'm going to be honest. I forgot this thing wasn't flying by default. That's fine. I think we were dead anyways, but... Definitely a little bit of a misclick there. Misclick, brain fart, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Shacklegeist doesn't seem particularly exciting. I'm bringing a couple uh, Aether Ghosts. Looking, if you're looking for sweet explorer decks or any of the formats I play, remember there is a playlist up on my YouTube channel there with lots of different formats on the front page. Explorer is the format we've been playing the most of recently. Assault-type fight rigging deck was sweet, but not very good. The Jun, the Jun deck is very good. I still have Kruger here, so they didn't board into any cheaper interaction. They're just all all expensive clunkers. I'm one drop. Welcome to the party. I guess I do get to go ahead and do like one drop plus hold up denial next turn. Oh, Mystic Dispute cheats Kruga. Okay, yeah, fair. Alright, basic swamp means no Omnath this turn. Just chilling with Lofty Denial up.
tick tock goes the lantern bearer clock chip. be able to hold up two denials i'm just gonna go ahead and attack for four here or one one land off of being able to attack with faceless haven and still hold up double denial If they play a second removal spell here, like a Brazen Borrower, I'm just going to let it happen. So it's really important that I have a Lofty Denial up when we go to their turn, I think. I agree that you are dead opponent. back be happy with our plan Any one drop in this hand's kind of gasoline. Good, they could have stomp on two. They could, they could stomp us. No stomp. Oh, you see, this, this is cheating, chat. This, this should be illegal. Guys, gals, and non-binary pals. We got him. Ha! Got him! Are we the bad guys, Chet? I am just the byproduct of the environment in which I'm being raised, okay? It's not my fault my creature deck has to play all these counter spells. It's Wizards of the Coast's fault for making this format just be riddled with sweepers. I'm just a guy trying to cast some creatures, Chet. They have shifting ceratops. Don't you feel bad for me? I have to deal with shifting ceratops. is playing the hippo of greed.
They block here. They take... Nine? Move, Yugi boy. Obsession does fall off if you put it on Haven, yeah. Are they dead? They're dead, right? I fire this up. I put Curious Obsession here. They block the two biggest. They take four. Yeah, they only, they only have two blockers, right? Actually dead through double shifting ceratops. Actually dead through double shifting ceratops. That's that's kind of impressive, Chad. I'm not gonna lie. Not I'm not gonna lie. Dead through double shifting ceratops is kind of a flex. Our deck is probably pretty good, huh? Yes, we could also pump the Ascendant because of Vigilance on the face of the statement. It is correct. This is definitely the most budget-friendly Explorer deck. Mostly commons and uncommons. Obviously, some number of rares because magic. That's how it works, but a lot, of, a lot of not rares compared to most decks. Well, it, de it depends on your definition of budget. So budget, in my mind, just means cheap, which means we're just counting the total number of rares and mythics in a deck. Now... As far as a deck that translates into other competitive decks, it's definitely not that. Because you're correct that there's a lot of things that don't translate into other competitive decks. But a, a budget deck isn't that, in my opinion. Feel free to disagree. Who's got two thumbs and is ready to die to Divine Purge? This guy right here. My body is not quite ready to be supreme predicted in this format. It's definitely this deck. This deck's probably unplayable when we get supreme predicted. Supreme verdict, right? Oh right, there's no divine purge in this format. Good shout. Good shout. Mana leak is busted. Sometimes it's like better mana leak and it costs one. I'm a big fan of this whole doing nothing. I don't care about that, right? They like go to kill a thing and I rattle chains. And we just like attack it to death.
Does my day have judgment? Farewell. Yes, farewell to you. So long, farewell. I'll see you and good day. Remember your training. All right, and now, even if they have another sweeper next turn, they're still dead to faceless they've been firing up. Well, so again, like, people talk about Spell Queller every time this deck that we're playing comes up. Spell Queller's a different deck than what we're playing, chat. There will definitely be a Spell Queller Spirits archetype in this format, but it's not this one. You don't, you don't get to play Faceless Haven stuff with Spell Queller. That's not, that's a big part of what makes this archetype reasonable. Getting priority, they could have a removal spell here. They do not. So, dispute and denial for sure. Yeah, people keep trying to tell me our deck is the bad guy, but, like, I'm the one that chose to register a bunch of creatures in this format, so, like, I'm pretty sure we're objectively the good guy. Trim a land against the control deck. We don't really need this effect. A lofty denial here because uh Geist Light Snare can cost one if I draw a curious obsession next turn. Like we draw obsession and then brick the land, Geist Light Snare still gets to get held up. This could be a wanderer, but I guess it's fine. Maybe it's, we just get to attack her. It's like not a big deal. Like, like, congratulations! You trade, you, you traded your four drop for four points of life and my my one drop. Like, thanks. They choose between rattle chains and upgrading the spirit. Upgrading the spirit is really bad against them playing emperor. So I'd much rather play rattle chains. Is contempted. Wait, I mean, it gained them four. All right, there's no supreme verdict in this format, so we're like officially in garbage time, right? Uh. 
but fair. Alright, now I think we just hold to upgrade the spirit this turn. Oh, this also has flash too, right? Because of rattle chains. Honestly, getting a Mystic Dispute on that 2-drop I think is a huge win for us. There are very few things in this life as satisfying as shoving Gandalf in a trash can shit. Very, very few things. Good, good shit. Good shit. Farming on up the ladder. Moving to the mythic. Do, 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 do. Hey, Volt Sparkle, thanks for the half year. I appreciate you shipping your Prime this way again. Welcome back. Some, some hands are tough mulligans, chat. Others, not so much. Leaving back the one damage to gain three here. Can diddle these two to diddle this one. Hey, diddle diddle, the spirits and the fiddle. They like to draw untapped blue next turn, so that way we can go Geist into hold up or spirit into hold up to Geist Light Snare. Nice. So I'll attack for five here and we'll leave back Phantom again to pair with Ascendant Spirit to uh, double them off their Aspirant. Spell Pierce out in the creature matchup. Get to bring these dive downs in. A lofty denial out matchup, honestly. Bring it in like a witness protection or two. Or an entrancing melody. Melody's kind of cute on their aspirant once it gets huge. Sure. Iron Storm Teamer. 
there's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Speaking, speaking of old mono blue cards. A curious obsession of their own here. Trade these, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree that Bearer being a spirit is is good upside. Good have diddled my creature in response, opponent. There shall be no post-resolution diddling. Gotta diddle up front like a respectable diddler. I no longer do hoots. I do not. So I've been, um, I've been a part of the official Pokemon Unite Championship Series broadcast the last few months since, uh, February. And, uh, it's been occupying my weekend time. Last, the last couple of hoots also ran like 12 plus hours, which is a, a hard sell to find people for. One counter spell, please. Magic's easy, chat. Just draw the cards you want. They have uh, another like portable hole here actually behind. Their deck, their build is pretty neat. Like their deck, their deck is um, a deck that would love Spellcaller, obviously, right? Like maybe when Spellcaller is legal, you play something similar to this. Ascendant Spirit here could be ready to fully pop off next turn, huh? Is Geist to Saint Trash too good for this format? Probably not. But they get to keep their obsession because they can attack with Storm Teamer here but they don't get to draw a card with it this turn at least. That feels like a win for us. Oh, 
I would have played Shackle Guy, if I would have played Lantern Bearer out, we'd beat the blocker. Oh, I guess they would have been forced to sacrifice this, but still. Honestly, they might they might want to storm tamer this so that way they can draw another card because they they really need an answer to this ascendant spirit, right? Yeah, yeah. I think they're I think this is a good a good play from them. Oh, they want to hit us to draw a card because they need a, need a portable hole to take this spirit off the table or another jump blocker. Did did not find it. Uh, cat guys is too slow. It also it also doesn't fly. Lack of lack of evasion is a big deal. Yeah, this, deck, this deck's very good. I think it's arguably one of the best decks in this format at the moment. I mean, I don't even know that we were explicitly a right match, a bad matchup for the last opponent's deck, Avocado, so much as just like our draw was good, theirs wasn't wasn't nearly. Mayhem Devil's probably impossible for us. When Christy helped clean out my office chat, she put she put all my snacks on a table in a location where I have to stand up to get to them. Perhaps perhaps she's making she's telling me I need to burn some calories whenever I want to stuff my face. Trouble here, chip. We're pretty dead to another fatal push. Yeah.
What? They must have another one, right? The only way that play makes sense? Do this. Some more counter spells. I agree that Melody for Devil probably isn't real. They devil us next turn, we're in trouble, but I also just like, kinda need to be adding pressure to the table. draw a card here, I assume. They're not gaining three, but they're drawing infinite cards. I don't think I lofty denial the deadly dispute. I think I'd rather lofty denial a play that they spend man on that impacts the board. And we just like give them, they already have so many cards. I'm not gonna beat them by outcarding them so much as we're going to beat them by, uh, <sighs> Potentially beat them by tempoing. I assume we're dead here. Well, I mean, all things considered. Not a particularly good uh, good play for them. We're technically losing the race at the moment, but a decent draw could change that. All right, if their hand is blanks, so this is lethal next turn, right? says We're dead.
Yeah, the, the moose making mana there was uh, low key kind of great. So they get to kill the rattle chains here, but I take two less damage in the process. So. Uh, they're dead to Ascendant Spirit on board currently. If they don't find a blocker or another way to gain life, obviously their hand has lots of, their deck has lots of both of those things. He says this his opponent draws a blocker and a way to gain life. Isn't Magic a better game because Cat Oven exists yet? It's fun, inviting, replayable, and exciting. Yeah, Cat Oven's like a Cat Oven's powerful like Nova Carnage. Only I have to sit there and wait the length of an entire Marvel Snap game every turn for my opponent to like execute their shitty combo. That's that's honestly like the card game market is so hard to break into, like even Riot Games has basically failed at doing so successfully, but I, I genuinely think Snap could break into it based purely on the game length metric. The variance that is inherent to card games is just so much more tolerable in a, in a setting where the games are shorter. Rough variance feels less bad in short games. So my opponent missed their third land drop. So I chose not to play Rattle Chains out here because if they miss the land drop again, they have to discard to hand size. Thought sees. Uh, sure. Yes, yeah, the, cu the cube system helps with variance a bit too. Agree with that. It helps with bad matchups as well. Like there, if there's a bad matchup, you just like bounce for one cube and call it a day. It's unfortunate that we lost our, uh, our card advantage, but it is what it is. Hey, what's going on, Nanich? Thanks for these seven months. 27 months. I watched like two or three different ways to pronounce that character's name, and I'm still just, I've accepted the fact that I'm just actually never going to get it right. Just fire this up and smack him for six. Well, 
Well, so the part of the problem I see is actually that there's not even true randomness. I actually think Marvel Snap's card acquisition would probably be pretty close to reasonable if the pools of cards that you get your cards from just made more sense. Opponent messed up here. They should have fatal pushed before I declared attackers. Maybe they didn't realize this was going to be a spirit I could protect. Like, if they just, like, took the couple of discards cards and movement cards out of pool one and put them all into pool two. Yeah, if just, like, each pool gave you... Yeah, or if they let you pick which pool your cards were coming from. You're like, okay, this is the discard pool, this is the movement pool, etc. I pick, I pick what deck I want to work on. I think their core system is probably fine if they just like massage some of those details. They've also they've also said there is another way to get cards, something they've called Nexus events that is that hasn't been revealed yet. So we'll see if adding that changes the dynamic at all. They don't know about this spell peers, so don't tell Scotty Chance. So I'm gonna jam this uh, this rattle chains here. Fire up this. Am I gonna fire up the face of Saban with this straw? Yeah, I think I am still. They divided enablers and payoffs. Well, they didn't strictly do that. They just like only gave you half of it. They like give you half the enablers and half the payoffs. Red black. It's actually our first red black matchup today, which is kind of wild. This deck's usually pretty popular. I don't, I don't want a sideboard here. I feel like spell pierce is probably not great. I'd rather have like some dive downs as a combat trick slash way to protect my stuff. I don't think they have quite enough red cards for Aether Gust to be good. This is just like a 3-2-3-2-3 three, two, three, two, three split on Geistlight Snare. Nah, I think Lofty Nile is probably worse than Snare here, huh? I believe if I like uh, an Entrancing Melody to grab a Croxa on occasion could be fine. Steal, steal, Croxa with Melody sounds like yes. So it's funny, we were I was talking with the boys yesterday, and I mentioned that there's a PS5 in my office that I play games on an occasion, and De Declan apparently didn't realize that I have a PS5, because he, he doesn't come in here that often, and he goes, uh, he goes, well, do you have an Xbox too then? And I was like, well, Xbox games you can usually play on the computer, so I don't have an Xbox. He goes, well, why would anybody want an Xbox then? And I was like, you're, you're not wrong, kid, you're not wrong. Yeah, letting people pick pool by franchise would be good too, sooner. And like deck archetype or franchise, I think would be good ways to approach it. By the way, if you want to see my kids be hilarious, I think it was yesterday morning's highlight. Jacob came in to ask me a question while I was playing Pokemon Unite. And then he like uh, hung out and like danced in the webcam behind me for like three minutes almost. And I, I didn't realize he was staying behind me because I was so focused on the game. And I was going, I was going back to do editing. It was actually really funny. Thanks for the followers, folks. People that are new to the channel, welcome. I stream full time here. We do Magic the Gathering. We play Pokemon Unite. We play some Marvel Snap. As well as a handful of other things. I'm also the father of three small children. Jake and Declan are my older two. They're seven and eight. And we also have a uh, terrible two, terrible two-year-old Haley. She's actually wonderful, but they call it the terrible twos for a reason. She had, she's just all over and into everything. All right, rattle chains is nice. It means I get to pass the turn here instead of playing into a fetal push.
My microphone is clipping. Can someone clip me clipping and send me a link so I know what to go back and look for? I need to, I need to look and see if it's an issue with uh, RTX voice or my actual thing. Or, or the NVIDIA software. I'm, I'm inclined to think it's the RTX voice because I'm not hearing clipping in my headphones. No third land is pretty brutal. Hey, Tim Tim Tim, thanks for the prime. I appreciate the 13 months. Welcome back. So, Haley's a very sophisticated two-year-old. She doesn't say the word no. She says, I don't want to. The Geist Light Snare. They're one off of escaping this, but I guess we're also two off of Melody, so we're probably dead. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take game three on the play. We're hopefully we'll have another land. Was anybody able to Twitch clip the audio, audio clipping? Oh yeah, that's that's Nvidia broadcaster. I mean, I mean, that's been that's been happening sporadically for a little while. Usually, usually it only happens during Pokemon Unite when the graphics card gets a little bit overloaded. That's definitely that's definitely on my end though. Thanks for the clip. All right, I'm going to turn off the... All right, this is, this turns off the audio filtering. We should, we should still sound okay. Bottom, bottom of land here. It's funny without the without the Nvidia broadcaster on, I can see my microphone is actually always constantly picking up a little bit something. So it does it does do its job. Oh, you know what? The air conditioner is running. Hopefully, hopefully I tagged them on Twitter with the clip. So hopefully, hopefully they have some idea. 
All right, we're not playing into our removal spell with the Curious Obsession. We're just going to chill with the Randall Sheen's drawn for now. If you subject yourself to the bird site, like this tweet or comment on it so NVIDIA helps me. Engagement enga engagement is the king of getting getting tech support chat. Obviously, if they have another removal spell next turn, there could have been merit to putting this on Shacklegeist for the sake of making our obsession creature not be stompable since they're stuck on two and have Bone Crusher. It's a really good time for them to draw a third land, huh? Good chance we're just dead here at this point. I guess they could theoretically not have, uh, not have another removal spell, huh? If they don't have a removal spell, this spirit's gonna kill them. Gonna kill them real quick. It becomes a 4 4 with flying next turn. Yeah, are they just escaping Croxa? Deal. Alright, chat. One more brick. Two more bricks, technically, with the blood. They could have had the removal spell and just, like, not used it last turn because the Croxa's such a quick clock. You put it. You and I are gonna take them out. We, it's a shame we didn't draw a uh, dive down there to punish their greedy sequencing. This looks very good. I think uh, the red, the red black matchup seems less than good. The super removal heavy kill all your things decks typically not good for the curious obsession deck, especially when they have a lot of super efficient removal like fatal push. But I think overall this deck seems like it's pretty reasonable. You're not just dead against the red black matchup like that last game, that last match showed like had we peel the dive down there, we get to kill them. You're probably, I don't know, let's make up numbers, you know, 40, 60, 45, 55, somewhere in there. Definitely behind though. Against the rest of the field, we felt pretty good though. There's a lot of people playing like super greedy, go over the top decks in this format. We're having efficient counter spells is uh, is pretty good. So if you're looking for a cheapish way to get into the format, how many how many rares do we have? I guess this one's not even that cheap. It's still got ma magic's an expensive game chat. What is 20, 21 rares plus three mythic. So you need to buy two $50 wild card packs. Something, something like that <laughs> for the low, for the low, low price of a hundred bucks. 
you can build yourself build yourself a non-rotating format deck. All right, let's play. Uh, let's play some Snapchat.